Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Brooke Roll. All right, today we're gonna take a trip to Burnett, Texas. That's about 100 miles southwest of here. There's a very cool cave system called the Longhorn Caverns. And we're gonna go explore that and kind of learn the history of this. Come on, this is gonna be fun. Alright, we have arrived. This is the place right here. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's really hot out here today and part of the reason I chose to go uh, today and do this is because generally it's really nice in caves on hot days. It's a nice day to explore a cave. So uh, we, I got my ticket. Uh, we're going to start in a few minutes and it's going to be a guided tour. I guess it, uh, the, the cave is about a mile or a mile and a half long, so we're going to be doing a little hiking. Now, I just saw something on a sign that says, basically, I'm not allowed to shoot video in here. And that's kind of a drag. It's one of those things I kind of wish they'd uh, tell you on the website because I might have considered other things. But I can take still photos, so I'm going to take a bunch of those and uh, we'll try and give you as much of a uh, an idea of what this is about from the still photos. Like I'm going to say, I'm going to see how much they're going to enforce that. Uh, but there is a sign in the starting section that says still photos only. So we'll kind of play it by ear. Okay, now it's actually the day after I visited the caverns and uh, I'm going to try and do my best to narrate uh, everything I remember from uh, from this tour. Now I got a couple of things that will help me. One of the things I was kind of disappointed with is I wanted to see if I could purchase a copy of a map of the cave system and they didn't really have one for sale but they had one displayed on the wall so I snapped pictures of it and then pieced them together and created a kind of a clumsy looking map that kind of shows the entire area we went. This cave uh, was about, a, the tour was about a mile long. And so it was a lot of walking in there and it was a lot of fun to do that. Um, I also picked up a little guidebook that'll give me a little bit of information on the cavern. So I'm gonna refer to this and the audio you're gonna hear is gonna, like I said, gonna be narrated uh, the next day and I'm gonna do my best to remember uh, everything that I was told. Now, first off, I wanna talk a little bit about the history of this cave, how it was formed and uh, basically how it got to the point where it is. A lot of time caves are created by geological forces, earthquakes, volcanoes, that kind of stuff. And then the, once, the, once the cavity inside is cleared out, then uh, dripping limestone from the ceiling creates stalactites and stalagmites and that kind of stuff, and columns and all that fun stuff. This one is a little bit different. Basically, and I've talked about this before, millions and millions of years ago, the, uh, this part of the United States, basically the entire central part of the United States, was a shallow inland sea. And over the millions and millions of years, animals that lived in this shallow sea, when they died, their, their remains uh, settled to the ocean floor and over time uh, were compressed into what they call limestone. Now limestone is a very uh, soft rock and you dig anywhere in Texas and you get a few feet underground, you're gonna hit this limestone. It's all over the place. Well, it's in Burnett, Texas also. And over time, little cracks in the, in the, in the surface of the ground uh, allowed water to seep in. And since the water contained oxygen and carbon dioxide, it was slightly acidic and the acidity of that water basically dissolved the limestone and created an underground river which formed this whole cave system. Apparently, while we only get to explore about a mile of the cave, the cave actually maybe goes as much as eight or nine miles from the starting point. Um, now, it was discovered in the mid 1800s and uh, at that point, most of the uh, cave was inaccessible because there was, um, the, since it was created by an underground river, there was a lot of sediment in there. And so you could only go so far before you hit the sediment. Now during the depression, they hired people for a dollar a day to go in there and remove this sediment by hand. And apparently over the period of the entire time, they 
excavated about 3,000 dump trucks worth of, of material from the cave, which were removed, put into 55 gallon drums, and then hauled to the surface and hauled away. So that's kind of how this all formed. And uh, that's why this cave is a little bit different than some of the other caves you see, because a lot of the walls you're gonna see are very, very smooth. And there isn't really a lot of stalactite and a lot of stalagmite activity, but there's some interesting geology in here, and we'll discuss that as we go along. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the, the ground under Texas and, and under most of the United States, the central United States, is limestone. But there's also layers of dolomite. And dolomite is another element that is a little less soluble than the limestone is and when the limestone is dissolved it tends to leave behind something called calcium carbonate and uh, so much of what you see inside this ca uh, cavern system consists of either dolomite or calcium carbonate now calcium carbonate is kind of interesting because there are some uh, things that we we take take advantage of and use all, all the time uh, like Ajax and Tums and stuff like that where one of the key ingredients is calcium carbonate uh, but uh, that is mostly what we're looking at here is these walls are either dolomite or calcium carbonate depending on where the layers are now the next section we worked our way into they called the crystal room and you might think from that 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 we're talking about you know quartz crystals or something like that that's actually really beautiful it is actually very beautiful but in reality this is dolomite and dolomite is uh, one of the things that gets left over when the uh, limestone gets dissolved away and it's actually very beautiful but unfortunately it's not very valuable it's just kind of nice nice to look at it's kind of a soft stone sometimes they'll use it for smelting iron but honestly it doesn't really have a lot whole lot of uses except for the fact that it's really kind of beautiful now the next section we ended up in they call the queen's throne room and basically it's because there's a formation on one of the walls that looks like a throne and in fact elsewhere in the cave system they found a stone uh, formation that actually looked like a dog and uh, the do they moved that to this part because they thought it made sense that the that the dog should be guarding the throne now uh, interestingly enough a lot of people think that the dog formation is something that was man-made in reality for the most part it wasn't it's a naturally occurring thing but when they were in the process of moving it they accidentally dropped it and broke it in half so kind of the middle section they had to kind of cement it together and then they also uh, cemented it to the floor in here but uh, this is more or less a natural formation now the next section we worked our way into, they called the main assembly hall. It turns out back in the 40s, they used to uh, actually allow people to come down here and it was like a nightclub where there'd be dining and dancing and music and entertainment and all that stuff. And this was really kind of a happening spot back in the day. And in, as a matter of fact, they, uh, they played a little bit of a recording of one of the bands that performed on a stage that was down there uh, for us. Now, I don't have, rec have that recording, but it was kind of interesting to hear that. There was also kind of another interesting story that happened way back when uh, there was an Indian tribe that was occupying this cave. And allegedly, they kidnapped a, uh, a young girl and held her down here and uh, they held her in this room and apparently the Texas Rangers uh, snuck into one of the holes that was in the end of the cave kind of crept up behind the Indians and there was a massive gunfight and uh, basically they wiped out all the Indians in there and managed to rescue the little girl. Now the next room we ended up in is called the Cathedral Room. The Cathedral Room uh, is about 40 feet wide, 140 feet long, about 35 feet tall. And one of the interesting things is when the park was dedicated in 1932, on Thanksgiving Day, they held the dedication ceremony in this part of the cave. 
Uh, the governor of Texas was a principal speaker. And like I said before, it kind of gets its name from its general shape. And there's also a large dome kind of on the north, north end of the room. Uh, there are numerous flowstone and dripstone deposits. So we get some like stalactites and stalagmites in here. Like I said, there aren't a whole lot of them, but there are some of them in here. And this is also the location of the frozen waterfall. So at one point they decided that this cave would be a good option for a nuclear fallout shelter. So for a while there, they uh, had they stored uh, uh, supplies, food, and water, and all that stuff down here in case such a thing happened because they figured they could put a few thousand Texans down here and protect them in nuclear war. Uh, also, a lot of people think about bats in caves like this. And this is one of those caves that doesn't actually have a lot of bats. There's a few of them in here and we saw a few of them but they estimate that the population of the bat colony in here is maybe 75 or 100 individuals uh so at one point i guess there was probably more and they used to actually collect bat guano to collect for uh fertilizer but that isn't really done anymore so as i mentioned since i couldn't shoot video inside the caverns i shot really hundreds and hundreds of photos uh, I've covered most of the main sections of the caverns now, but there was a lot, a lot of extra photos I shot that just show the beauty inside the cavern. So what I'm going to do for a big part of the rest of this video is I'm just going to show you a little slideshow of some of those images. Enjoy.
So since the main objection they had to uh, shooting videos was just that people get distracted by the cameras uh, and they end up bumping their heads with a low overhead here, um, I'm going to kind of break the rules a little bit here and film this on the way out. This is the stairway into the into the cave. And it is now gone from being 68 degrees to 92 degrees in just a couple of minutes. Really hot out here. So that last scene ended when my battery died. So fortunately I got a spare. This was a fun tour. I'm glad I did this. I would have been a lot more uh, fun, I think, if I could have videotaped it. But, you know, those are the rules, so... That's where we went in, right there. So I think that's all I have for today. Uh, like I said before, it would have been fun if I could have gotten some more video inside the cave, but rules are rules and want to be a good guest, right? So I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night. <laughs>